not only is she a veteran, but she has a lot of good, very interesting things to say to us. So please give her your attention. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Gideon. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Lieutenant Colonel Retired Vanessa F. Hicks Calloway. And I have been invited here today by my good friend, Ms. Laura Martin, to talk to you about the government, my background in the military, and especially focusing in on the Bill of Rights. And what I'd like to do, if you guys don't mind, I like to know who it is I'm talking to. So one by one, if you could just tell me your name and what grade you're in, I would greatly appreciate that. And ma'am, if you don't mind, I'd like to start right here. My name's Rylan, I'm a junior. Rylan? Taylor, I'm a senior. Taylor, senior, get it done. <coughs> and Carson, junior. Junior, all right, and you said Carson? Okay, Carson. Jacob, junior. Jacob, sir. Artie, junior. Uh-huh. Blaine, I'm a senior. All right. Weston, I'm a senior. Mm -hmm. So we got some juniors and seniors here. You are, sir? Braden, I'm a junior. Okay. Uh, Keaton, I'm a senior. Brenna, I'm a junior. All right, have I missed anyone? Ladies. I'm Stephanie Nolls. I'm the director and principal. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm Sherry Trollchuk. Um, I teach whatever they need me to teach. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's it's great, and I want you all to meet. This is my next door neighbor. This is Mr. David Ford. David Ford is a very good friend of mine, and he's assisting me because I'm also running for office. I'm trying to become the next state representative for the Texas House for District 30 for the great state of Texas, but that's not why I'm here this morning. I'm here to focus on you guys, but let me give you a little bit of my background, okay? So there I was, standing in Camp Doha. I was in a motor pool getting ready to go off into Iraq for a convoy. I was the convoy commander. I had just finished company command in Germany of an HHC military intelligence company. I was selected at the grade of captain to be the Brigade S2. The Brigade S2 is the top intelligence officer for the brigade. And it was unlikely, a little bit different for them to select the captain to be the top intelligence officer for a brigade. Normally, it's for those in the rank of major. However, God gave him his favor and saw fit to allow me to have that opportunity. So there I was in that role in Camp Doha, getting ready to go on a convoy. I brought everyone in. I listened to the intelligence briefings and all of that, and I gave my own briefing to those that were getting ready to go on the convoy with me. I told them, that we are going into Iraq. During that time, we were dealing with the main supply routes, and we were dealing with IED issues, etc. The enemy started to use tactics that were very uh, unconventional, meaning that they used old vehicles, they used dead animals, they used all sorts of devices to hide explosives in, so that when we came rolling along on the convoy, the explosives would go off. And then they added compl complexity to the attacks, meaning that when the IED went off, then they would send a team in to do an assault. So we were going into that area. So I gathered everybody in, and I want you to kind of visualize it. So there I am in what we call full battle rattle. That's the Kevlar helmet, all of the gear, the weapon, the protective mask for nuclear biological chemical attack, and there I was. This little black girl from Victoria, Texas, started off right here, poor, no dad around, on welfare, but I, there I was, leading America's finest men and women into a combat zone on a mission. It just goes to show God will use anyone for his glory, for his purposes. So I called them in. She gave me the report. She being the lieutenant that was in charge of reporting. She said, ma'am, all weapons, all personnel, all ammunition has been accounted for. We are ready to go. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, what we are about to do, we have been trained to do. This is not an exercise, this is execution. And I told them, what we are about to do today will make our mothers proud, will make our fathers proud, will make our aunts and uncles proud, it will make our teachers proud, it will make America proud, it will make ourselves proud. So let's go do this. And that's exactly what we did. We convoyed up into Iraq, past the border, into a place called Al Basra. We did our mission, which was intelligence gathering. We had to repeat this a couple of times throughout my deployment in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. And we did it so successfully that my commander saw fit 
to award me with the Bronze Star. So I am a Bronze Star recipient for actions in Operation Iraqi Freedom. But I'm not standing here today, ladies and gentlemen, to brag to you at all. Because the real heroes, the real warriors, are the ones that put it all on the line. The ones that did not make it back. I was just one of the ones that God saw fit to bring back to tell their story, to honor them, and to be an encouragement for each and every one of you. And so that's just a snapshot of a little bit of my military career. I served for 26 honorable years. And like I said, started off right here with nothing. But I wanted to be a part of something that was bigger than myself. And I decided, you know what, that's the United States Army. And so for those of you that are on the cusp of trying to decide, you juniors and seniors, where you're trying to decide, what am I going to do with my life? How am I going to glorify God? Because ultimately, for me personally, I'm not trying to proselytize, but for me personally, I just want to glorify God with everything I say, everywhere I go, with everything that I do. And guess what? Going into the armed forces, that's a great way to do that. The Bible even talks about soldiers and the full armor of God and all of that. <coughs> God has a special place in his heart for soldiers, for military people. So I just ask you, think about that. The other thing I'll say about my military service, and then I'll give you guys a chance to ask a couple of questions, and then I'll get into the Bill of Rights, is that I've been all over the world. I've been to France. I've been to Germany. I've been to Switzerland, Belgium, Iraq, Kuwait, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar. I've been to so many different places. And it's all because of my military career, which has given me a world view. However, through a Christian lens. And so don't, if you get an opportunity to do something like that, you don't want to turn that down. Was it hard? You're darn right it was hard, especially for a female body like mine. I mean, in high school, I danced. I was on the, uh, uh, during halftime, I was the one out there doing little dances and stuff. I was not this big warrior, this big athletic, strong person. No, the military molded me into the warrior that I needed to be in order to be a decent soldier. So you can be molded. So don't take a snapshot of yourself now and think that you can't be this. Because you can if you allow the training to take over. And so what you're looking at here is what we call in the military a shadow box. You capture some of the highlights from your career and you put it all in a box. And this is something that I'll be giving to my sons when I get ready to cross over and receive my, my, my reward. Because I am saved. Yeah. Amen. So when I receive my reward, this is what will be left over. But this is a flag that I received when I retired. And then what you see here on the far right side, it's probably hard for you, but I'll give you a chance to come and look at it when you get ready to go to lunch. These are all the ranks that I've held in the military. And you'll see clearly I started from the bottom as an E-nothing, <laughs> basically. But when I earned my first stripe, that's the one right down there at the bottom, you would think they were pinning general stars on me. I was so proud to have that first strike. So I'm asking you, don't fret small beginnings. No. Don't be upset about it. Well, oh, wow, I'm just on fries, or I'm just flipping burgers or whatever. Don't fret small beginnings. It can lead to such bigger things. And so I went on up to be a private first class, a specialist, all the way up to the rank of lieutenant colonel. And so it just goes to show what you can do when you let go and you let God. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to brag at all. I'm just demonstrating what God has done through my life so that I could give this testimony to you guys. <clears throat> These patches represent combat patches. When you serve in a combat zone, they give you special patches to indicate that experience. And that's what you're looking at here. So I deployed that bottom one with the arrows pointing up. That was the 32nd Army Air and Missile Defense Command. That deployment was in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Totally different ball game than the battle that we had in Iraq. My job still as a military intelligence officer was to provide intelligence to make sure that our airways were not clouded with missile systems that they may have been willing to use against us. So that's what I did in the 32nd. Basically rocket science type stuff, but I'm not a rocket scientist, don't get me wrong. I'm just going was an intel officer, but I tracked rockets. And then, of course, the story I just told you about, this patch here was seven signal brigade. Uh, in the center are the ribbons. And so if you join the military, when you do something significant, they give you some sort of a medal. And you can see here, I can't get it out of my system. <laughs> I'm still wearing pins, pretty much like I'm still in uniform. It's just kind of a part of who I am. So I still wear pins. And I love to wear my pins because people will come and ask me, what's that? 
and it's a great way for me to engage with people and use them as a conversation piece. Some people wonder, why is she wearing these pins? Because I love to engage, and it works. <laughs> and then over here, these, of course, are the medals that you receive. And ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I started off here very poor, nothing. And then I had this big organization now treating me special, pinning medals on my chest. And I just felt awesome and ended up falling in love with the United States Army and stayed in for 26 years. Now, don't get me wrong, education is also important. I spent some time, I got my bachelor's degree at Sam Houston State University. My military experience was what enabled me to be able to use that experience to qualify for the Army GI Bill and the college fund. My family, they didn't have money to send me to college. I had to figure out a way, I had to figure it out. And I also have an identical twin sister that's still serving in the military now. I retired, she stayed in. She's a full board colonel at West Point. And her daughter just finished at West Point and she's now a first lieutenant. So listen up, Miss Laura did a good thing by inviting me here. Ladies and gentlemen, you now have a resource that you can leverage, you can call me, you can work it through Laura or call me direct and say, hey Vanessa, well you can say Miss Vanessa, Miss Vanessa, I'm thinking about joining this. Don't do it till you talk to Miss Vanessa. I can give you guidance. Say, hey, Miss Vanessa, I think I want to be an officer. Guess what? I can help you with that. So please, I'm now your resource for military issues. And so uh, the medals, like I said, the Bronze Star. My other highest award was the Defense Meritorious Service Medal, and that was for support of Operation Enduring Freedom. So I want to pause here, give you guys a chance to ask questions, and then we'll dive into the Bill of Rights. Are there any questions so far? <laughs> so we we're gonna we're gonna press we're gonna we're gonna drive on. Um, I also like to have fun, guys. I have a an eighth grader. He goes to Howell Middle School, and my son is a special needs child. What you have here is very special. This private kind of setting slash homeschooling kind of setting. My son, when I tried to put him in private school, etc., we were unable to do so because he's a special needs child. Edward Calloway is brilliant. He's very intelligent, but he has ADHD and he has ODD, Oppositional Defiant Disorder, which is interesting, Laura, because I'm military all this, but he defies me at every turn. <laughs> so, and he's 14 years old, so for those of you that think, oh, wow, Vanessa's out, no, I can relate to everything you guys are going through, all of it, social media issues, you're dealing with growing up issues, you're dealing with identity, who am I kind of, I got it, I got a teenager at home. So I can relate. I also have my other son, Eric Calloway, who's a junior attending Sammy State University. He's a junior, like I said, he's on the track team and he's studying computer science, technology, and engineering. So he's the real brains of the family. Only got him his dad, I do admit that. Um, and my husband is Jason Calloway. We've been married for 23 years, fellow veteran, fellow Texan, and so we've just been really blessed. But anyway, I'm saying all that to say that I'm a resource for college also. When you're trying to decide, okay, what college do I need to go to, scholarships, et cetera, I've been through the whole gamut. I've been through the nightmare of the paperwork. I've struggled to get scholarships. I've struggled with helping him with the ACT. I've struggled to help him with all of that, the SAT. So I am now your resource. Make sure you leverage it. I want to help you guys. And so let me pause there. Any questions about my son's middle school, being a teenager, college, him being on the track team, him studying computer science, technology, engineering, anything before we press. How does he like Sam Houston? He loves Sam Houston State University. And oh, by the way, it's my alma mater. So it's a great school. Um, it's very modernized. Their campus is consistently growing. Their sports teams are awesome. And he is what you call a Division One athlete. He runs the 4 by 100 And my son, understand, you reap what you sow. And he doesn't mind paying the academic price. He doesn't mind paying the athletic price either. And he has worked so hard to where they gave him a scholarship. So he got a scholarship worth $2,500 for each semester, but he's got to earn it. They only gave him the first chunk. So they're saying, hey, if you're not making it athletically and if you're not making it academically, you're not going to get that other chunk. And I love the way they, they broke that up. And so Eric Calloway, he understands that. He's getting after it. And I do admit... I tried to get him to go in the military. <laughs> He's like, no, mom, I don't want to. But for me, I felt like I didn't have options. But now my son has options. He does. 
So that's that's Eric. Very good question. He loves it, and I think you would too. Are there any other questions? Okay, you know what? I sense that uh, you guys might be getting a little tired. I know it's before your lunch. I have some candy. Where's my Where's my candy? Oh, here. Okay. Take one, you know, pass it along if you, if you want some. So let's let's get them going. The other thing is this. I have a question for you guys. Um, how many of you here want to see Miss Vanessa do a rap song by a show of hands? Let's see, there's one, two, yeah. okay. All right, I got a few. Okay. So uh, here we go. Obviously, you see, guys, I'm not a shy person. <laughs> and let me tell you guys something. In life, <coughs> be confident, be bold, be unashamed. Because when you are a believer, you represent the Lord Jesus Christ. He will give you the boldness that you need to do what you have to do. Okay, well, where's Miss Laura? Miss Laura, now it's You have to do that. I got to do Okay, here we go. It's really short. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. When America came into history, the founding fathers said it'd be for the brave and the free. So they signed their names on the dotted line and launched the greatest country of all times. It was Washington and Jefferson, to name a few, risking their lives for the red, white, and blue. Oh, say, can you see? It was for you and me. The American dream, American dream. Oh, 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 American dream, American dream. When in the course of human events we find these truths to be self-evident, that's declaration. Constitution, revolution. We course the crown. We wouldn't bow down. Now grab your gun, sons, for the American dream. American dream. <laughs> so that's a great segue into our Bill of Rights. Guys, it's obvious. I love this country. I don't care what anyone else says about our country. It is the greatest country in the world, bar none. And I believe that the state of Texas is the center of the universe. Yes. And I believe that our district is the center of the center of the universe. Don't let anyone tell you that we don't have a great country, because we do. With this being Black History Month especially, I'm hitting on the fact that even though we had to suffer, my descendants, to get here to America, you know what? What the devil meant for bad, God always means for good. So now, I owe it to my descendants. I'm a descendant of a slave population. So I owe it to them to do the very best I can with this opportunity that I've been given. And the Constitution lays it all out, lays out the foundation for me to take advantage of it. So let's talk about the First Amendment. The First Amendment. I've been told that you guys have been going over it, but don't worry about it. I'm not going to put anybody on the spot. What I want to do today, with the time I have remaining, maybe about 15 minutes, is give you a great way to remember the Bill of Rights. Because if you don't know your rights, and Miss Laura, they've done studies. They've gone to universities. they talk talked to kids, and they can't even tell you what the First Amendment is, at the university level. So I feel like God has sent me here today to remind each and every one of you, you all have a, the divine appointment. You have a divine appointment. Mm -hmm. And this is just a part of your divine appointment. But you have to arm yourself with the Bible, and you have to arm yourself with the Constitution of the United States. They said that Abraham Lincoln practically memorized the Bible. So, what am I saying? In life, that needs to be one of the most important books you have. It's the Holy Bible. And I will tell you something. The enemy doesn't want you to realize that. Mm -hmm. That's your source. That's your power source. You need to read Proverbs, at least one verse of Proverbs, every day. I'm telling you. It's like doing reps. Mm -hmm. It's going to strengthen you spiritually. It really is. So back to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. There are five components in the First Amendment. Who can give me one component in the First Amendment? One. Sir. Uh, freedom of speech. He nailed it. Freedom of speech. What, yeah, who's, who's got another one? There are freedom, five of them. Freedom of religion. Yes, sir. That's two. You got three more, sir. And it, um, <laughs> I know you got it. We, no, just, no, we, we got can it. circle back. We can circle oh, back. You got you We've got yeah. speech. We've got religion. Is it press? Press. Excellent. we got two more. 
Okay, let me let me help you guys out. We have the right. What are we doing right now? Assembly. Assembly. Right, we've assembled oh, peacefully. Yeah. We have that right. Where's one more? Let me help you. Petition the government. Amen, sister. We can petition the government. When we're not happy about something, we can petition the government. Now, guess what, guys? That seemed a little bit hard for you to remember. I'm going to give you a great, easy way to remember it. Okay? I want you to visualize Uncle Sam. I'll wait. When you conjure up Uncle Sam in your mind's eye, let me know when you got it. Everybody see him? Top hat, the striped pants, stars, all that stuff. Now that you can see Uncle Sam in your mind's eye, I want you to now put him in a church house. So Uncle Sam represents the government. Now he's in a church that represents freedom of religion. I'll wait. When you have your Uncle Sam in your mind's eye standing in church, let me know. Everybody got it? Yeah. So there he is. You, now you remember freedom of religion. Okay? Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion nor of the free exercise thereof nor or bridging freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of the right of the people to gather peacefully, nor freedom of the people to petition their government with their grievances. That's First Amendment. So you got Uncle Sam, he's in the church house. Now he is behind the podium or behind the pulpit speaking. So now look at that. You got three components there. Religion, speaking, and now the press is there taking his picture. Much like David is taking my picture. The press loves to take pictures. So I want you to throw in the press now with the lights and the cameras and all of that. You're not going to forget it. So now you have religion, you have speech, you have the press. I want you to visualize people in the pews, in the church, all seated, gathered there peacefully. The other piece of it, I want you to visualize people are taking notes. They're writing down what Uncle Sam is saying. I guarantee you, if you use that picture model, you're not going to forget those components of the First Amendment. I may not be able to get to all ten of the Bill of Rights, but we're going to try. We're going to press. Okay? Everybody good on the First Amendment. I don't want to leave anybody. Everybody good. All right, here we go. Second Amendment. Who can tell me what that is? Sir. Right to bear arms. Yes, sir. Absolutely. The Constitution says a well regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Ladies and gentlemen, I got it. There are people uncomfortable with the Second Amendment, but the bottom line is it's our right as a free people and a free nation. And when the Founding Fathers wrote it, I didn't write it, they did. I took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, which means I support and defend even the Second Amendment. When the Founding Fathers added that in, they said it was for the defense against a tyrannical government. Mm -hmm. Hunting and fishing and all that stuff, and even self-defense for bad guys, yeah, notwithstanding. But the main part was in case our government goes crazy. Yamamoto, I'll give you an example. Yamamoto was that famous Japanese general. And I'm sure you guys have probably studied it at some point. But remember Pearl Harbor? Yamamoto and his generals, they also talked about doing a ground assault in the United States of America. And guess what? Who can guess why Yamamoto said, uh-uh, I'm not going on the ground in the United States? Who can guess why? Because all the people had, I mean, they had the right to bear arms. So they had guns. You got it, sir. And that's a part of the reason I believe our nation has not been physically attacked until those cowards put down our towers in 9 11. When you think about it, we haven't been physically attacked. That's a little ground force coming to the United States. They know about our Second Amendment. They're not that crazy. But Yamamoto said that. He said, I'm not going to go on the ground because there'll be a gun or a rifle behind every blade of grass. That's a direct quote from General Yamamoto. So don't let anybody, I know there's a lot of talk out there, don't let anybody try to sway you. It's your right. People died. My brethren and sister, it may not even be a word, sister, and I just made it up, died so you could keep your rights. Now it's up to us. We've been handed a gift, ladies and gentlemen. And guess what? You guys are the next generation. If Laura and I and, and the rest of these ladies, if we fail to do our job, 
to prepare you, the next generation, we're going to lose those rights. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't want to do that. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. Mm -hmm. That's President Ronald Reagan. We have to fight for it. We have to keep it in order for you guys to do the same. Because guess what? There's a generation behind you guys. So we're trying to do that. So we've got it. Everybody good? On the Second Amendment. We got time. We're going to press. We're going to roll now into the Third Amendment. Third Amendment. Who can tell me? Third Amendment. Third Amendment has to do with soldiers. Quarter inch soldiers? No, yes, sir. Yeah, you nailed it. That gentleman here. <laughs> Good, because that one's hard. Now, sir, you heard that. That's what I'm talking about. You're welcome. Right, quartering soldiers. And here's how I remember that. Oh, oh by the way, the way I remember the Second Amendment, it's Uncle Sam wearing crisscross uh, ammo belts. <laughs> and that, that's a cool way to remember it, right? Contra up Uncle Sam crisscross ammo belts, two belts, Second Amendment, anyway, Third Amendment. That is, uh, we do not have to quarter soldiers because during the Revolutionary War, the soldiers would just show up, hungry, oh. tired, going to place to sleep, and they just show up at somebody's house and say, "You've got to quarter me." Well, that's a, we're not doing that, guys. So the founding fathers said, "Nah, Third Amendment, you do not have to quarter a soldier." However, Miss Laura, if I show up at your house, I sure would appreciate it. I'm just kidding. Absolutely. You have so quartering place. soldiers, Third Amendment. So the way I visualize it to remember it is, my husband is also a soldier. He's a veteran, and so I pretend like, oh, okay, Jason's outside. I'm mad at him. That's the thing. He's trying to get in. I'm not going to quarter him, but he's got two <laughs> friends. There's three people trying to get in. I'm not letting him in. Anyway, that's how you can remember the Third Amendment. We're going to press. Fourth Amendment. Fourth Amendment. Who can tell me? Anybody remember that? Somebody kicks in your door, and what's the first thing you're going to oh, say? That's right. Unreasonable search. Exactly. Nature. You're going to say, what? Where's your warrant? You're not coming in. Fourth Amendment, you have the right against unreasonable search and seizure of your persons, your property, your house, and your effects. What am I missing, uh, David? Anything? Fourth uh, Amendment? I got them all? Yes. You have the right. When someone tries to search you, if it's the government, they represent the government, say, excuse me, if you don't have a warrant, I don't have to let you search anything. Ladies and gentlemen, don't freely give up your rights. If someone comes to your house, they knock on the door, and they say, excuse me, can I search? There are some people that don't know their rights, or they don't know. They'll just let them in. No. You say, no, get a warrant. But you're right. You're not being disrespectful. But you're right. People die for that. It's your right. Fourth Amendment. What about the Fifth Amendment? Fifth Amendment. Oh, you asked me a question. I don't have to say anything. Is there something with the pre? You got the right to remain silent and You got it, sir. We have the right against self incrimination. There you go. Oh. That's our Fifth Amendment right. <laughs> we don't have to testify against ourselves. Even if we did steal the candy from the store, when you show up and the cop says, Did you steal the candy from the store? Now, God, of course, you should do the right thing and you should admit it. If you don't, you're going to have a lot of guilt. You're going to feel bad. But you don't have to. You don't have to self incriminate. I plead the Fifth. You don't, don't do that to your parents, though, guys. <laughs> this only applies to government. Okay, you can't believe the fifth with mom and dad. But there's another part of the fifth commandment, and that is the eminent domain part. The government can't just come up my little house over, in, we live over in the Northwest area, and say, excuse me, we're building a new highway, and uh, y'all are going to have to move. What? Excuse me. Eminent domain says, even if you do want to take my house, you have to first of all go through a process and you have to pay me a fair price so you're protected because there at one time there was a lot of infrastructure being built up and people were being taken advantage of so they came up with an amendment that protected the citizens rights against people the government taking their property away from them it still happens but it's very very rare and they do have to pay a fair price now what about the sixth amendment sixth amendment the way I remember the Sixth Amendment is, I think, tires. So you know that the bottom of the six is like a circle. And so I visualize the circles going really, really fast. And so that's the right against, uh, for a speedy trial. You have the right for a speedy trial. So tires moving very, very quickly, that's speedy. So they can't throw you in jail for 20 years and say, uh, we'll get to you. No, they're violating your Sixth Amendment right. They have to get you a speedy trial. The Seventh Amendment. Seventh Amendment. Who can help me with that one? Okay, this is kind of goofy. I know I have a few more minutes, guys. When you go to the dollar store, 
okay? Go to the dollar store and you get a bunch of items. You get seven items. This is the seventh amendment. And those items are worth about $20. That, this is how I remember it. It's goofy, but it's how I remember it. I remember myself in a store buying seven things that's worth $20. What that means is you have the right if you go to court and it's valued at more than $20 and you want to sue somebody, you have the Seventh Amendment right that says you can do it and have it decided by a jury. So it is, if there is something, a case that is worth $20 or more, it can be decided in a court of law by a jury. So that's the Seventh Amendment. Okay. Now the Eighth Amendment. Eighth Amendment. Who can help me with that one? The Eighth Amendment. All right. Get those juices flowing. Eighth Amendment. You know, when I grew up, my mother was old school. Corporal punishment. Okay. And when my kids grew up, I had two sons. They're great boys. And you know what? We did a little tap tap, tap on the hand, and a little one tap on the butt. Corporal punishment. Cruel and unusual punishment. Never. I never engaged in cruel and unusual punishment. That is your Eighth Amendment right. They cannot throw you away and put you in some dungeon somewhere for like 30,000 years because you stole candy. That's cruel and unusual punishment. Now, the Ninth Amendment is one of my favorites. The Ninth Amendment. It's your catch-all. So if I go to the store and I buy Coke, I prefer Coke. I prefer Coke over Pepsi. Guess what? That's my right. It may not be written in the Constitution. So the Ninth Amendment is your catch-all. It lets you know that you have certain rights that may not be found in the Constitution, but you still have that right. I can go to the movies and see whatever movie I want to see. I have that right. It's your, I call it the catch-all amendment, your Ninth Amendment right. And the way I remember that, you guys know the multiples of nine, the magical multiples of nine, where when you go like one times nine is nine, you go all the way down, and how you, those multiples add up to nine. I love that. And so that big catch-all, the magic of the number nine is how I remember the Ninth Amendment. And then finally, we'll, we'll, remember we're doing the Bill of Rights, the Tenth Amendment. Tenth Amendment. Who knows that one? Every Texan should know the Tenth Amendment. Guess what? Texas used to be its own country. Guys, we've got it going on. This is an amazing state. Teachers, they'll correct me if I'm wrong, Texas used to be its own country, its own nation. Under the leadership of Sam Houston. That's why she goes to Sam Houston now. <laughs> Sam Houston. Guess what? We have rights. We have independent rights as independent states. And so the Tenth Amendment is what grants the states their independent rights. That's your Tenth Amendment. So ladies and gentlemen, we've now gone through the Bill of Rights. I bet you'll remember them. So now, you guys know your rights. So you're going to go out there being a little bit bolder, a little bit stronger, when you know your rights. You're not going to let somebody challenge you on that or take those rights away from you. And so I just hope that I have said something, done something, that's going to help reinforce your knowledge because I love this country. I love young people. I'm excited for what you guys are going to be going into. The 21st century, if I had it to do all over again, I'd trade places with you guys. Because when you look at what's going on in this nation, the internet, I've got things at the tip of my fingers. Information that I need is just automatically there. I mean, it's a great country. Make no mistake. Let nobody tell you that it's not. And you are on the cusp of getting out there, getting into it. So guys, we got about, what, five minutes? Ten. Five minutes in? Yeah. It's ten. So you know what? I'm going to pause. I'm going to shut up. And I'm going to let you guys talk. I want to hear what you guys have to say. You may have come to hear me, but I want to hear you. What's on your heart? What's on your mind? You can talk about military. You can talk about Bill of Rights. Whatever. I want to open it up for a discussion and give you guys a chance to, to talk. Anyone. Anything on your heart and your mind that you'd like to say, question or comment? I don't think it's right that they gotta take our second amendment away because like, how, I don't wanna call someone stupid, but like, how can you just not realize if nobody, if we don't have our guns and then they can just come over whenever they want 
anybody, mm-hmm. and they can just feel that. That's probably like the only reason why we haven't got a tattoo. You say, because, um, yes, sir. No one has a mess mm-hmm. with us because we all got guns. Right, and so. Anybody, you guys can respond to his comment, but I'll just say this real quick. There are some evil people, okay, that have conducted mass shooting incidents. And I'm speaking to your question. That's why some people feel that, well, you know what, maybe we should just get rid of guns. But ladies and gentlemen, I have a friendly reminder. You go back to the Old Testament, we live in a fallen world Mm -hmm. where evil and bad things are going to happen and you need to arm yourselves. As Soon as my son becomes of age, He understands weapons and all of that. He's not allowed to carry a sidearm. You have to be 21 years old. As soon as he reaches that age, his mom and dad were both trained military with weapons. We're going to train him so that he's ready. So that we can teach him what he needs to know in order to protect himself. You need to arm yourself. That's just the society that we're in. So that's a very good point, sir. That's just, you know, Vanessa's take on it. That's our world. Any other? That's a very good point, sir. I'm glad you amplified that. So you see, guys, nothing's going to happen. You want to throw something out there, we just talk about it. Who's next? We got a few minutes. Tell us about your campaign and what office you're running for. Sure. I am running to become the next state representative for the Texas House District 30. And what that means is I'm trying to be one of 150. There are 150 Texas legislators. Each legislator or representative represents a certain district. My district is comprised of six counties. I have Aransas County, Calhoun County, DeWitt County, Goliad County, Rivero, and also Victoria. Those are my counties in the 30th district. And I want to represent those counties. We are rural counties. Meaning that in the rural areas, we are big on agriculture, farming, ranching. We're big on our coastal areas, our beaches, our sanctuaries for our birds, those that are endangered. We believe in our ports. We receive a lot of income based on having a healthy port within the 30th district, which we do have one. We also have a very robust public education system. A lot of our employees within the 30th district, they work for independent school districts. So we are heavily represented by those that teach school. We also have universities, especially in Victoria, Texas. We have Victoria College and the University of Houston. So we have a university footprint as well in the 30th district. I mean, it's a great district. We are also, what I'm considered to be financially savvy in the 30th district. Granted, we have some populations that are beneath the poverty level, but for the most part, we're relatively financially healthy. There are improvements that need to be made, especially when you look at Hurricane Harvey. So within my district, those are the concerns that we have. Keeping our oil and gas industry healthy, keeping our agriculture industry healthy, and promoting and pushing strong public education and higher education. That's really the representative that I want to be focusing in on those areas. Now, of course, in order to do that, I believe we have to protect our rights. And so I'm really big into the Texas Constitution and the United States Constitution. So you'll have a representative that recognizes the greatness of the 30th, that wants to promote those areas, recover from Hurricane Harvey, make sure that our kids, you guys are getting the best education possible, that we're paying our teachers the best salary possible, because guess what? You reap what you sow. If you don't pay those teachers, if you don't take care of your teachers, then you're not going to get the highest quality. And guess who suffers for that? You guys do. And then the next generation suffers for that. So I want to promote that. The other thing about my candidacy I want everybody to know is that I'm unashamed. I'm an unashamed Christian. I truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you guys have the right to believe that too if you want to. So I want to promote freedom of religion within the 30th district. Some people may say, oh, what? What? No. When you look at what's going on in Austin right now, Austin ISD, there's some scary stuff. There's some curriculum that's entering in that I won't go into detail on, but it's inappropriate. It has no place in an independent school district. So if they decide to make me the representative, I want to focus in on academics. And I'll tell you this part real quick because it has to do with my candidacy. I think that what we need to start doing is looking at an acronym that I created called REAP. REAP. We reap what we sow and we'll reap what we don't sow. The W stands for welding. 
a lot of you guys need a marketable skill out there. Not everybody wants to go to college. I'm not here to push college. I'm one of those rare individuals. I'm not trying to push you guys into college where you get $200,000 worth of college loan debt. No, there's welding. We need to push that. There's also the R in my acronym stands for oil refinery jobs. All those jobs associated with the oil and gas industry. Guess what? I met a gentleman in Calhoun County. He is a millionaire. He has never set foot in a college. But he learned his trade and a marketable skill through the oil and gas industry. So that's my R, refinery. The E stands for electricity. The jobs in the, elect in the electrician trade, those guys make a lot of money. Ladies and gentlemen, you can take care of a family if you're an electrician. And it's one of those marketable skills that only improves. It doesn't you know, erode away if you become an electrician. The other one is the A, that's agriculture, farming, ranching. I want to promote that even through our schools and even at the next higher education level. We need more farmers. We need more ranchers. We're Texans. That's what we do. That's the, a, a large part of the 30th district. And then the P is for plumbing. I had to have plumbing work done in my house. I don't wish that on anyone. Plumbers, I love you. They're great professionals, but it is expensive. If you become a plumber, which, oh, by the way, my son at one point wanted to become a plumber. I said, yes, they make a lot of money. You can take care of a family. That's a marketable skill by becoming a plumber. So that's kind of me, what I'm trying to promote. If, they, if I end up getting blessed enough to become the next rep, that's what I'll be pushing for. Hurricane Harvey recovery, higher education, paying our teachers, making sure that we are maintaining our rights. And just also, I also believe in live and let live. Somebody wants to live in a certain way, I'm not trying to judge anybody. However, we need to rally around what unites us as Americans, and it's the Constitution of the United States. Well, guys, it looks like I'm out of time. I want to thank you so much for your participation, for your patience with me. And um, like I said, consider me now as your resource. If I can help you, I'm going to help you. I can help you with what it takes to get into those military academies. I can talk to you if you just want to enlist in the military, and I can also help you with higher education at the collegiate level. Use me as your resource. And I want to thank you, Ms. Lauren, for the invitation. I'll come back anytime you guys invite me. And if there are no other questions or comments, this concludes my presentation. Thanks, guys. Thank you.